You do. It's covered up by the mic, but you have it there. I do. Hey, we are live. I just realized that. I was waiting for a countdown. I was waiting for the countdown. <laughs> well, if there's no countdown, is there going to be a countdown? I don't know. We're live. I'm going to wait. And see. I don't think so. I think we're okay. I think we're just going to go. No, I'm she getting a no. no. So we're going to wait. Now, David. Go. Oh, okay. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Flickr Effect and our takeover of the digital media track, Dragon Con digital media track, open mic night here on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. By the way, I'm Dave Lott. Joining me is Bobby Jackson. How's it going, Bobby? Good. Long time no see, man. I know. We've taken a little break. It's been a while. Yeah. Also, right next to me, Michelle Hillard. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, on the agenda tonight, we are going to be uh, reviewing some stuff uh, recent and things that we haven't had a chance because of our break. Uh, and uh, we're going to go ahead and say this from the beginning. We're not going to talk spoilers tonight. Uh, mm, I mentioned that because if you're familiar with our show, uh, we talk spoilers a lot. <laughs> Uh, a lot of our reviews are geared toward those who have uh, seen the things that we're talking about. But tonight we are going to play it safe and we're going to discuss a few things starting off with uh, the most uh, recent thing we've seen and that is uh, The Hunger Games. Um, the Hunger Games, I have to pull up the title to make sure I get it right, The Ballad of the Songbirds and Snakes, uh, the prequel to The Hunger Games trilogy. Uh, which is now in theaters. We've all seen it. We're going to chat about it. We've all seen it. Michelle, you've actually read the book as well. Yes. Bobby, have you read the book? Yeah, no, I, I didn't know that, uh, that you read that one. I read the other three from the yeah. original trilogy, but I had not read this one. So I'm curious I haven't read any of them. So. Yep. Oh. All four, baby. Woo -woo. You'll have to excuse me. My voice might come in and out, and I do apologize about that this evening. You've been a little <laughs> under the weather, but... A little bit. You felt like you were good enough to, to, to jump show. in on this. I want to do the show. <laughs> I have knowledge and opinions. Dang it. <laughs> so, yeah. Let's hear him. Oh, so I guess I should go first. Oh, then? yeah. Bobby's throwing it to you. Apparently, so. he is. All right. And to me. <laughs> the Hunger Games. Um, Again, spoiler free. I'm going to throw that reminder out just for us. Spoiler free. <laughs> so yeah. I don't share spoilers. Uh, uh, what do you think of the movie? Well, I. I actually I enjoyed the film. I think it um in in a way I think it really catapults you back into that world very quickly. Maybe if anything uh, a bit too quickly. I feel like it uh you you're really engulfed in that um that land that I can't think of it now. Um Pan Am. Pan Am. You're really it, it really throws you in there. And and because it's a prequel, you know, it starts back much much earlier than the traditional Hunger Games, the first uh, trilogy of books and series of, of films. I think I read it's like 60 something years. Yeah. Um, the entire movie revolves around, I can't think of his name now, Cornelius Corn Snow. Snow. And he, as we all know. A young Snow. Uh, yeah. It's it's when he's young. He's finishing up um, school. And he's ready to go to, I guess, basically academy, college. And uh, he's finishing up his last year in... Uh, the traditional schooling there and um it i mean it jumps into it pretty fast uh so you gotta kind of be ready to be on your feet but i i didn't mind that personally but i know some people were i've, I've read people who have been like i'm not what's what's going on there's there's a boy and a girl and and then then there's this young guy and i don't know what's happening and i was like yeah mm -hmm. it definitely throws you in there pretty quick but i actually kind of enjoyed that because i felt like it really wasn't messing around it was trying to get right into the story and it does and I will say, like, I enjoyed it. I had a good time with it. I think, I think it might, I don't know. I think it, it follows the book basically to a T. I think the only time it really strays away is towards the end of this, uh, the film. And if anything, I liked what they did with it better than the book. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it. I think, you know, when I look at the first four films, the first two films I enjoyed a lot, and the third film was was good, and the fourth film I feel like really, really missed the mark in the, the whole series, and it was a kind of a big letdown in my opinion um, for the for the trilogy of the book, and then also for the the series of films. 
um, since I split that third book into two films. I don't know. It kind of left it on a uh, kind of sad note. This kind of brings it back up. I don't think it's quite as good as the first two Hunger Games films is, but it's definitely better than I think the last film ended on, in my opinion. I thought the acting was great. Um, I can't think of her. Which is it, Rachel Ziegler. I think she is captivating um, in this role, and I, I'm, I think she's a rising star. I think she's doing well in as far as her film. Um, I guess catalog is going. I think she just needs to work on her social media a little presence a little better. <laughs> um, but otherwise, uh, I think we're gonna see really good things from her. Um, no, I actually enjoyed it. I don't think I loved it. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But I was definitely like, oh wow, okay. Like, I think it shows the intensity of the 10th annual Hunger Games and how raw <laughs> it really was, <laughs> considering it was just the 10th one and it gets there it does the it does it it doesn't hold back at all it really uh yeah um no i liked it i was i was pretty happy with it actually i was surprisingly happy with it in a way i kind of went in going ooh this doesn't so you have low expectations going in I would say low expectations or lower but, it sounds like yeah they were definitely lower i feel like the promotion of the film wasn't great I don't think the trailers were doing it a lot of justice. If anything, it might have been giving away a little bit too much story in the trailers. Mm. But no, I actually I liked it. It was pretty surprised. Bobby, what did you think? I think I follow pretty similar to Michelle. I, I went in there. I don't think I had any expectations. Not mm. low, not high. Uh, just no expectations. And like you said, Michelle, I think the the trailer showed a little too much because I remember mm. watching that first trailer and at a certain point, it seemed like it was a pretty long trailer. And I just remember at some point in that trailer, I stopped it because I was like, man, this is showing a lot. And yeah, this trailer isn't even over yet. So I think that was all I saw from that trailer. And of course, when you go to the movies as much as I do, that trailer popped up a lot. And so I constantly was trying to hide my eyes or, or try to not pay attention to it to get too much detail of the story. And I, I think what I end up liking the most about this movie was the thing that I didn't really um, have too much expectation about one way or the other, which was learning more about the lore and, and the history mm. of the games and seeing that formation of how it started and seeing um, Peter Dinklage character and Viola Davis characters in the role they play within the games. And obviously uh, young snow and seeing that story unfold because you know how that story ends with him. So right. for me, it was more about like a, a history lesson in a way uh, of learning about the games and getting that, that aspect of it. The um, third act is different in that it's, it can be a little uh, jarring because of the way that the first two acts are going, but it also makes a certain amount of sense. If I, if I, I think if we were more along the heels of when the original trilogy came out, I could see a case being made for the first and second act could have been its own movie. And then the, uh, a new movie, a sequel to this one could have been that third act and then some, um, because I think there's some things to explore even once this movie ends and certain things that don't get completely wrapped up. So it yeah. sounds like, Michelle, you were about to say something. No, I, I was just, I knew you haven't finished your review, but I agree. Mm -hmm. Like the book, obviously the book gets into a lot more depth of the history, but then also just, yeah, a little bit more into um, the drivers of some of these characters, some of the things that are making them do the things that they do and the reasons why they're doing the things that they do. And I think the book gives a lot more depth to them, um, mm -hmm. especially in the first half, basically just pre the start of the 10th annual Hunger Games. There's a lot more there. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I was kind of thinking kind of the same thing you're saying is it, it almost would be nice if they just made this two films as crazy as that sounds. And basically got the 10th annual Hunger Games going about halfway through at some point, stopped the film and then started a second one to finish up that and then to get, continue on with that third act. It, yeah. I could have seen that being going that way for sure. And I really think they only could have pulled that off if 
it was closer to the original trilogy when it was at its height. Uh, Correct. Doing that now is too much of a chance because yeah. clearly the box office shows that it, it may not uh, warrant getting a sequel if it doesn't do uh, continuous business throughout its run in the theater. But the same thing that I liked about it is almost the same thing that makes me not love it too. And that's because I know where Snow's character goes Mm -hmm. And so it made it very hard for me to connect to that character. I, I'm constantly not not really on his side because I already know where he, right. what, what a bad person he becomes. So I, I couldn't quite connect to the character. And and the other part of it, that I think that I, I um, that made me again not quite love it was that the time spent with other characters that are in the arena. I don't felt I didn't feel was given a, enough time that I didn't really care about the other people that were competing in the arena. And I don't know if that's done by design, but I just didn't feel too much empathy towards those characters just because the story didn't really uh, service those characters much. Uh, they're just sort of there and to, into the background of the larger story with Snow. So. There's, a, there's certainly some things about it I thought could have been uh, fleshed out a little bit better and would have made it a little bit more rounded for a movie for me to uh, really get it over that hump. But as it is and as it stands, I did enjoy it. I, I liked it, and I would I would go see another one if they made another one. So there's that. Oh, I that's it's up, though. Um, as for me, uh, I liked the movie for the most part part <laughs> uh i guess is the best way to put it though i have an interesting i, I had an interesting point of view watching it which is embarrassing mm. to say and i'm gonna be honest with you guys because i know i can be honest with you guys and you won't judge me you should be honest. um unless you <laughs> fell asleep no i did no, not fall asleep. <laughs> nothing embarrassingly like that. No, i only fell asleep during like one of the best movies of the year one year yeah um, yeah, 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 yeah 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 uh no uh the the thing that's kind of embarrassing to admit which actually i think you know maybe improved my experience was that it wasn't until later in the film that i was like oh that's who this guy is snow i'm like i didn't even know who this guy was <laughs> like wow. i know i had yeah, no for, idea for whatever like, reason you didn't wow. put one and one together I, just, I guess either in marketing i never thought about it and i've never read any of these books and right. obviously i've seen the other four films but it's been a while i know who snow is but it's been a while and i just the name never was a connection like and it really wasn't until again we're not talking spoilers but it wasn't until later in the movie when i was like oh wait that name oh yeah, yeah i remember who this so is. you, you and, might have enjoyed his growth into what he becomes yeah yes and no okay. uh i think the movie lacks in um some needed character development with him still from motivation like there's just stuff that is like you can see where it's trying to show some motivation for things but it feels like there needs to be more and uh i'm gonna sound like a broker record after you guys but i i said this to michelle i remember after, right after the movie um it was like i i felt like this could be two films in a perfect world um and you know, we, we have to silence our dogs dog toy <laughs> <laughs> so in a loud. in a perfect world yeah if the studio had just made this movie and like we're like we know this is gonna be great we're just gonna make it two all at once we're just gonna shoot two movies and you know release them as two parts or something like yeah i think that would have been great for storytelling for storytelling purposes but I, we can all see why they didn't do that and it's fine that they didn't but um, there's just there's decisions he makes and things he does throughout the film where I'm like, eh, I don't feel like there's enough here explaining to me why he's he's doing the things he's doing. And I mean, in the end, when the movie kind of finishes, I, I like the very end of the film and I kind of like how it wraps up the story. But um, yeah, there's stuff throughout the movie that I feel like it's just kind of missing. Overall, the acting I think is is pretty solid. I've you know we I've heard it from numerous reviews, and I'll, I'll say it as well. Viola Davis seems like oh, she's yeah. having way too much fun in this movie. She's, she's having a good time. She's fantastic. <laughs> in it. Um, everyone's good in the film, though. And then overall, I think I enjoyed it maybe a little more than I was expecting, but I didn't think it was great. 
I come from a place where, yeah, I didn't read these books. I thought the, the original four films were fine. Like I had a friend ask me recently, who's never watched any of them. And he was like, I just never had a desire, but should I watch them? And I was kind of like, hmm. eh. like, yes, but they're not like required viewing in my opinion. Right. Like, you know, for us, uh, dragon con fans, it's not in the it's, pantheon. if anything, it's fun to watch scenes <laughs> that were shot in the Marriott and, and yes. stuff like that. But, um, yeah, the movies are for me just kind of they're for the over, I guess the average opinion I would have of all four films is they're fine. Some are better than others. Yeah. I, I, I mean, would tell you. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, was, yeah, they're not like in the pantheon of like great films or like must see films in your own encyclopedia of knowledge of movie scene. Like it's they're not. Yeah, right. What were we gonna say, Bobby? Just that if he has any interest at all into this type of world or genre, I would point him more towards uh, Battle Royale, which was right. kind of the same thing, but uh, mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit more uh, meatier, I would say, in a, in a way. So and knowing him, he would just be that much one more of a fan of Battle Royale than this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, think, I think we all can agree. I think maybe because the film... And maybe the film could have just even been slightly longer to give you a little more depth in character motivations. I can't remember. What was the runtime? It was like 2.15? 2.37. Oh, wow. Okay. I so, will say it felt kind of longer to me. Like, then maybe they should have just mm -hmm. done two films. <laughs> Not to reveal too much about the structure, but there is a point in the movie where I'm like, wow, we're still... I know we've got a while to go, and we, and we really are going to go for a while on this one. I I did kind of have that sense as I was watching it. I kind of feel like because they broke it up basically into three parts, this is really how the book is broken up into. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that first part, I feel like flew by like super fast in the film. Yeah. Whereas in the book, that's the meatier chunk of it. Like you are, you're getting a lot of backstory and you're getting those character motivations and all that information. You're starting to understand a lot more what's driving people. Mm -hmm. You get more information on, the kids that are going to be in the 10th annual hunger games. And so you do kind of go, oh, okay, I understand what's motivating this one and this one a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, they could have done two movies, but what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have the box office in front of me. Do you remember Bobby, what it made? Like it was like 40 probably. something million, wasn't it? Like, 42. I don't recall. Um, I'll try to. It, it might it have been at quickly. least 50. I thought, but I think it was like a yeah. hundred something worldwide. So, okay. yeah, that sounds familiar, but yeah, I thought it was like between 40 and 50. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I mean, she didn't write this novel. Suzanne Collins didn't write this novel. It was done a while after the original one. So yeah. that's another reason why this film didn't come out until so much later. But yeah, I can see where if she had written this novel, you know, coming off the heels of the original trilogy, and then having this film come out relatively within a couple of years of the first series of films, I could see where it might have done a little bit better. But I think right now it's kind of too far back in the it's too far back in time. And right. we're just not we're we're not in the early 2010s anymore. Like that's just not where we are as a culture, as crazy as that sounds. Like we're just mm -hmm. that's not where we are anymore. It's not 2008 anymore. So yeah, it was number one at the box office mm -hmm. of the weekend, but it made uh, 44.6 okay. domestic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unless you guys have anything else, again, spoiler free to share about Hunger Games, I think. No, no I just like that kind of does what it does to see if it, it go on, goes on to make a little bit more money and they decide to make a sequel to it. Because I'm sure right. they, they would love to continue making this series some more. So we'll see. Our, our dog is challenging our patience. Bringing us every, every squeaky toy. <laughs> every She's squeaky like, oh, you guys toy. are doing a live show? You guys are live part of this. on multiple platforms tonight? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So that was my dog's. Going to have a whole collection of, <laughs> yeah, of toys here on the, the desk as she brings them to me and I make them stop. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on from the Hunger Games, uh, since it's been a little bit since we've done I'm a show, a bit. Uh, we haven't had a chance to talk about some Marvel stuff that uh, has hit theaters and TV recently. And uh, that includes uh, the Marvels, the new Marvels film. Um, which is what been in theaters for at least a couple weeks now, right? two weeks, two, two weeks. weeks. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny too, even in this time, I don't even think Michelle and I in private have talked <laughs> about this movie, have we? Usually we don't. Sometimes we do. Like Sometimes we, lately we we've little, been we dabbling little, yeah, and we'll just talk about it. We did it. a little bit with the Hunger Games, but we didn't for the Marvels. No, we didn't. So I don't really know no. what you think of this. No, no. Oh, this is interesting. I, I <laughs> thought for sure you guys had probably talked about it by now because it's been a couple no. Years, so. no. Honestly, oh, I think okay. if we had... I want to say if we had thought of it, I, I guess that's not the way to put it. Like, I don't know for, for whatever reason, I think we just, we work on autopilot of not talking about what we watch. Right. Because we hold At it. At this we point now, because show. we've, we've done it for so long. Yeah. We've been doing this for so long that I think you and I are really good about just not even talking about it until we do the so show. It's like a habit. And then mm -hmm. with this one, it was like, we, we didn't talk about it out of habit. And then, then like, we didn't really get to record a review of it. And until now. And <laughs> yeah, and yeah, we just never did. No. So anyway, mm. the Marvels. What did you think, Michelle? Me at first again? Yeah, what? you again. Bobby, man, come on. Let's share the love here. I mean, I'll go first. It's all Bobby. Good. Oh, you want yeah, to. let's go see what it. Bobby said. So uh, you, I love my Marvel stuff. I love my superhero movie stuff in general. And I know that at this point, Marvel's been on such a downswing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so a lot <laughs> of people like, have just light. been, yeah, kind of just really it's 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 weird to see it real honestly in that way because marvel had been at the top of the pyramid and everyone loved everything that was coming out anytime you saw the mcu and the marvel flip you're just like all right i'm in for a good time let's go and now to see this sort of downtrodden kind of level that they've reached it's it's pretty sad. It's a bad. But sad. Um, <laughs> so with that going into it, I had I will say that the the trailers for this movie have not looked great. Um, there's elements within those trailers that I made me look forward to it, specifically the the interactions between the three Marvels. And so I think that was kind of where I was going into it with is what's the story and, and how are we going to wrap this uh, story up with these three characters because this pulls in from the uh, miss marvel tv series on disney plus as well as wandavision when mm -hmm. you have um monica rambeau in there so mm -hmm. this had the heavy lifting of trying to introduce two characters that people haven't seen unless they watch disney plus as well as continuing on um, um, captain marvel's story from the first one and i I came out of that movie enjoying it and, and really liking it. And I didn't think that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did because I ended up watching it again the next day, almost like, did I really enjoy that? Did I really like it as much <laughs> as I think I did? Questioned yourself. And then I watched it again and I was like, and I picked up a few more things and I did, I, I liked it a lot. And I think I liked it even more on a second viewing and certain things that I, 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 I was into the first time I got into even more specifically there's within the trailer, you see this fight scene where they're at Kamala's house and Miss Marvel's house and they're, they're fighting and they're switching. And the second time I really noticed the choreography of that scene and how well it was done. And you got to figure that had to have been hard to shoot just because you have these three actresses and they're trying to switch in and switch out and do all the different things as well as the action that's going on within the house. And I thought it was done really well, but outside of that, just the chemistry of the three characters together was really well done to where I, I, I just felt like I could have just watched that just a, a whole movie, just the three of them talking and interacting. And I would say that the story in and of itself and the villain are on par with to me thor the dark world which is very mid is not terrible but it's definitely not up to the higher standards that marvel usually puts out for certain movies so for me it's like the star of this movie was miss marvel and if you take her out of this movie it becomes very mid in that way but I, I think that she is the element that sparks the rest of it and, and really has this kind of wide-eyed youth in terms of how I feel like when I'm watching a, a Marvel movie, she's living that in real life, being with, around her hero, Captain Marvel. So 
I felt like her performance was infectious and it, it made me enjoy watching her as well as watching the movie. So obviously there's a element to it that there's a, a deeper story there that uh, we can't really get into and especially the post credit scene. But I think those things kind of added to the element to me of like, okay, where do we go from here? But just in general, I just really had a good time watching these three characters interact and um, be on screen. Do you want me to go next, Michelle? Yeah, why not? Uh, I have to agree. I enjoyed it. I was surprised. I, I am surprised. I, I am surprised, I, too. I am I surprised. I thought you were going to hate this, David, I'm just, honestly. I'm just jumping yeah. in and saying it. Uh, yeah, I went Dang. in with fairly low expectations, though I was curious because... We were hearing pretty mixed stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. there's some, you know, YouTube channels and reviewers that I follow that were like really hating on it. And then other people who are really coming to sing its praises. And I was like, wow, this seems like a really divisive situation. I yeah, it's always interesting to go into a movie knowing that there's people really far on one side or the other. And I mean, I'm we we mean it literally, like people that were like saying mm. that this was possibly one of the worst in contention for the worst mcu film period correct and then other people saying no well, this is great what are you talking about and uh and the rotten tomato score seems to kind of fit that i mean it's actually a certified i think fresh rating of like 62 percent. i think when oh, i saw wow. it. Oh, yeah. um not great but not terrible and the uh, audience score was like 84 percent or something like that so yes 83 right now oh wow okay um but yeah, uh, I went into it kind of also, I you know, feeling the the, the slump of Marvel and the MCU lately, <laughs> like you just talked about Bobby and going, I don't know, like, this doesn't seem like it's going to be great. And I don't know if that played into why I enjoyed it, because I'm with you. Like, there's a part of me that thought about, oh, I'd, I'd be interesting to watch this again really quickly or soon just to see if I still enjoy it as much as I did the first time. No, I've not done that like you did, Bobby. Hmm. but i i had a good time it's not it's not fantastic uh yeah kind of similar to earlier marvel films the villain is whatever the villain's not great yeah. in this movie hmm. and i mean i don't hate the villain um but it's... i don't think the villain's hateable enough <laughs> yeah, yeah that's yeah. the problem the villain is is eh, if anything hmm. sorry but that was that seemed to be the common complaint in yeah. early Marvel films. Like in a lot of those movies are Marvel films that we all really enjoyed, but we would always go, but the villain was meh, whatever. Mm -hmm. And this seems to kind of fit that mold almost kind of perfectly. Um yeah, no, I don't have a lot to add, to be honest. Like I had a good time. I, I'm very curious to watch it again, but uh, I enjoyed it. And now I'm very curious to know what Michelle thought. Michelle thought of this movie. I, I think David might have actually liked it more than I did. Oh. Right? And I'm saying that, and I did enjoy the film. I thought it was actually a lot of fun, and I'm with Bobby. Like, for me, it was really all about these three women coming together, the camaraderie between them, and their own individual storylines that are separate and yet merged. And I like watching them all together on screen. Like we were saying, like, from the trailers, you could see that they're obviously switching places with each other. And so every time they would do that in the different scenarios they were in throughout the film where they were switching places, be it by accident or for intentional reasons, I thought it was really great. Like everything was choreographed really well. And I thought those plot points were really well thought out. And I enjoyed that stuff. Like Honestly, when the three of them were on the, on the screen, it was really having a great time. Mm -hmm. Their, chem um, their chemistry works really their chemistry well. works really well and i say that and i'm a little bit different on bobby i think kamala uh, ms ms marvel uh sometimes her tempestuous uh positive outgoing like teen attitude can kind of get a little grating a little bit sometimes hmm. um i don't think it's quite as you know lovable as say as spider-man has been you know as peter parker or even miles morales um sometimes she kind of gets a little weird but overall she is she is lovable you know there's there's a moment where 
excuse me, there's a moment um, in the film, and I won't give anything away, but basically you you see the transition from from child to I'm an adult now. I have to make adult decisions. These are adult situations. I've, I've My childhood is officially gone. Like, the reality smacked her in the face really hard. And the, it, it was interesting to see that scene kind of play out because she could tell she was really upset about it because she realized, wow, that's that's over. <laughs> like, those days are gone. So I liked that character development. Seeing her go from that to, to where she ends up in the film, I think is really good. And to see her continue to develop is going to be really um, excellent. No, I, I had a good time with it. Again, my issues, the villain is not... I don't hate the villain, if anything. Like, you know, the motivations for the villain, you're kind of like, hmm, get where she's coming from. <laughs> it was really, it was like, mm, relatable. Um, it wasn't villainy enough, and it wasn't... It was almost silly how over the top they were trying to make her villainous-y sometimes. And so it just, it doesn't, it didn't work, unfortunately. And I don't think that's any fault to the actress and I can't think of her name right now um because she's a new addition to the MCU but I think yeah they just didn't flesh out her her villain role very well she's it just Loki's wife yeah they're engaged or, right are they married are they married or they're I engaged don't know I think. they're married but well, they're uh, they're significant other partner yeah. they're partnered they're partnered um Little, I think it's I love how the MCU has a little like or something like that. Yeah, yeah I love how the MCU has little like partnerships all over, but he's like all together. Anyways, um, <laughs> <laughs> again, apologies, my throat. I'm guzzling tea as we do the show. Um, so no, I think that her her character was lacking a lot. Um, I wasn't really a fan of the whole uh, prince scene, and we'll just kind of go with that. Oh, see, I enjoyed it. Really? Yeah, yeah. me too. I like it. That works for me. I, I will say if it had gone on a little bit longer, yeah, I might have turned on it. I'm glad but... it. I didn't feel like it overstayed its welcome. Yeah, yeah exactly. I thought, it, I thought it worked. If it, yeah. You're right. If it had gone on too long, it would have been too much of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's okay. It. I don't know. But no. Um, sorry. I think overall I enjoyed it. Maybe not quite as much as you guys, but I still had a good time with it. And I think the ending was solid. They landed the they, they nailed the ending, in my opinion. And yeah, they we're, stuck. They stuck the landing. And yeah, we're not talking about the after credit scene, mid credit scene. Whatever no, I won't even mean that. But now I think. But yeah, I, yeah, I definitely had seen it ahead of time. <laughs> unfortunately, I know, and I feel bad for you. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, That's it was so like sad. it was the day after we knew that people had screened it before the release, right? So I knew people see, had seen it the night before, and I went on X and was like, "Okay, I'll I'll do a search for the Marvels because I'm just curious to see what reactions are." <laughs> the very first tweet that pops up after that search is video of the mid credit scene, and I'm like, "And it, you know, of course, it, right now. of course, it takes me a second mm. to realize what I'm seeing." So I'm scrolling away as I'm seeing a a character reveal, and I'm like. I didn't oh, want this information. Well, I guess I know that now. That's fine. Yeah. And it's it is fine. I it's, it's BS is what it is. But it's just so frustrating that people feel the need to share. I gotta like be that. the person that shares the information. I Don't have you to guys gotta person. know what the credit scene Everybody's is? I gotta be the one that's, that I reveals be the it. One. It's, I swear sometimes people can be like beasts. I mean, it's like they're really bad about spoiling things and I, I don't get quite why they get a joy out of that when they know that it's literally the next day and people have not had a chance to see the movie right. yet. And they're going out of their way to make sure that someone else is, is spoiled. And it's just trolls. Sad. Yeah, but it's a bummer. <laughs> well, moving on then uh to another marvel property that we still marvel. haven't had a chance to talk about which has been around even longer at this point uh and that's uh loki season two over on disney plus uh wrapped up its season what a, the same day that yeah it was, <laughs> released. it was the same um, day that is yeah it had a thursday release uh, they dropped the, the last episode episode six on whatever thursday that was two weeks ago and and that night were the first showings of the marvels um I also we really I don't well I guess we've talked about this one a little bit a little but, bit not but, a lot but not a lot but anyway 
who wants to take a crack at Loki first, spoiler free? What do you guys think of the season and well, possibly I'm, the show? I'm wearing overall, the catchphrase. So I'm going to go first. You are right. All right I go am. First. I'm wearing Loki's catchphrase. You are. Um. Mm. Plus my voice, I don't think it's gonna make it much longer. <laughs> please, please don't force yourself. <laughs> I will. I'll just, I'll just keep guzzling my tea. Don't mind me. Just gonna keep chugging tea. Um, no. Um, Loki season two. Overall, I will say I think the season kind of a mixed bag, which is crazy because I actually really loved the first season. Um, no, I feel like season two has had had high a lot of highs and lows for me. Uh, but in the end, you know, it's. <sighs> I love watching Loki's Loki, you know, working with, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I can't talk. Sorry. Sorry. I, I would help, but I'm no, I super apologize. Um, <laughs> I can't think of his name cause I've been choking. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't. you're thinking of a uh, Morbius. Or... Morbius. Yeah. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Loki and Morbius is, um, Relation. I apologize. Mobius. 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 Is what I meant to say. My... Sorry. Thank you. Because <laughs> the other guy is the vampire. <laughs> so, yes, yes, that's right. Mobius is right. Mo Mobius. 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 It's super Mobius. similar. It's very similar. Sorry. Um, the relationship between Mobius and Loki, I think, is like the highlight um, throughout season one and season two. And I think in season two, you know, there's scenes where they're just together and they're just having a conversation. Maybe one's helping the other one through a situation, the other's helping the other through a situation. But either way it goes, they're just enjoyable to watch on screen. Just really lovable. Um, it's it's just it's an interesting situation that they're in um, with he who he who remains and the TBA and I don't know. I think in a way, and again, I don't want to get into spoilers. In a way, the story. It ends on a well. That makes a lot of sense, <laughs> and in a lot of ways, you go. But that doesn't make sense the way they the way it is. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. Hmm. It's it's a mixed bag. Me and season two of Loki. In the end, I I I love watching Hiddleston as Loki. I think he's fabulous. It's one of my favorite MCU characters for sure. And um, yeah, no, I. I liked it and I enjoyed the story and I liked kind of kind of seeing the conclusion of this chapter. Um, but I feel like it, 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 it didn't quite stick it the whole way through. It wasn't a solid win the whole way through for me. There were episodes. I just don't, especially episode three as lovely and visually stunning as episode three was. I didn't like it, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. I, I, I can't see. I can't even remember exactly what episode. Three it was, was the on. time travel one. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, wow, this just isn't doing it for me. Or was it episode four? No, it was episode four. Anyways, sure. see, I don't even know. Like, it, it was just such a frustrating, it was a frustrating episode. Because I'm like, visually, this is excellent. Story-wise, I was like, yeah. And so, yeah, I just feel like there was just ups and downs to it. And too many ups and downs. It just didn't come together as a whole. Like, this was a really great season for me. But do I still enjoy it because it's Loki? Yes. Totally guilty, one hundred percent. I'm gonna drink my tea. <laughs> All right, yeah, drink your tea, rest your voice, <laughs> Bobby. What do you think of of Loki, the season, the finale? What do you? Think? Uh, I would say I would mirror once again Michelle's thoughts to a certain degree. Um, I I felt like it was a mix back for me, but not for necessarily the same reasons. I think that. One of the things I, I enjoyed about the first season of Loki was the idea of the TVA and the idea of these different universes and everything in way time worked and the explanations and adding to the mythology of all that kind of aspect. And I feel like in the second season, they kind of get away from that to a certain degree. And then it becomes more just about... Um, I would say something along the lines of something familiar. It's not necessarily doing exactly as something else, but it's doing those beats that feel familiar when you talk about time travel and, and doing certain things. And where the first season felt like it really went for it and went out there, the second season felt more to me a little more confined in, within the, the elements of what it was creating. 
And I wanted to still go out there and go wild and blow my mind with certain things that it was doing and, and make it kind of like, okay, they're, they're really going for it. And, and they have all these things at their disposal. So I don't know why when you have certain things, not saying that it needs this per se, but if you're really going and playing with the, these themes, why couldn't you go into a universe where you would see like Loki being Thor instead of Chris Hemsworth as Thor or just like a lot of ways you could play with some of the, these <clears throat> aspects. But then it felt like that got tunneled into the um, the Kang of it all. And so it became very linear in its focus and, and it wasn't sort of as uh, creative to me as the first season was. There is definitely some episodes and some things within episodes that were great. And of course I like Ki Hu Kwan in this series as OB and it's seeing him. And like Michelle mentioned, the relationship between Loki and, and Mobius is great as well. Um, I felt like the, uh, I, I can't remember her name uh, all of a sudden, it just left my mind just like that. But um, the the other Loki, the female Loki, she didn't get a much, a much to do this season. Sophie? No. Um, yeah, so Sophie. I oh, okay, yeah. She didn't seem like she had as much Holy. to do uh, other than be angry most of the season. So <laughs> that, that kind of felt like uh, there wasn't much exploration there as there was in that first season. Um, I did enjoy that last episode and, and the the way the show looks is is really well done. The, the music is great and all that stuff. But I just felt like they could have really kind of pushed those boundaries a little bit more than they did. And it's and it's interesting because it seems like when I look on social media and different YouTube videos, most people praise this season as like the best Marvel stuff that's been out there. And, and I'm not there with everyone. So it, it's weird. I feel like how people uh, felt about Andor <laughs> compared to like their what they like in season two of Mandalorian or something like that, whereas most people who love their Star Wars with lightsabers and, and Jedi, uh, they didn't quite like Andor. And so they thought like it was too slow or it was just not uh, the same kind of, it didn't have the same sort of feel. And for me, I think um, I'm kind of that way about Loki season two, where it's, a lot of people would say, this is the Andor of this, the, the uh, MCU in terms of the quality and the things that they're doing with it. And for me, it's like, I feel like I'm the people who are saying, no, I want Jedi and lightsabers. I'm like, no, I want superheroes, superheroing and doing, <laughs> you know, things with visual effects and, and, and doing the powers and stuff like that. And, and I can appreciate it still on what it's doing. But I think that if you're going in that road, then you really have to go for it. And I just don't think that the second season did all of that. So I, I overall mixed bag, but I think in the end, I did like where it landed and was curious to see like if they're planning on doing anything more beyond that, not necessarily another season, but just more with that character. But uh, we shall see, I suppose. Uh, I'm gonna sound pretty similar, mixed bag. Hmm. Uh, I loved season one and there's a lot of things I loved about season two. Uh, I just like to show in general the, I just like watching it like the production di design. I love it. I just, I love the look of this show. Like you mentioned, the score is fantastic. The score is so good. So good. The show. So um, good. and the acting's great, yeah. but yeah, there's just something about like watching it and just it just i just love the way it looks i just really do <laughs> and <laughs> and for that alone i was like even the episodes i didn't care for i was like i'm still I still like watching this i still like listening to this yeah um, oh, the world building is amazing but yeah one, it was a mixed bag some of it i really enjoyed some of it not so much i think where i may differ a little bit is that i didn't care for the finale and it's one of those things I really feel like I'm in the minority on that. Like you mentioned, Bobby, looking at other YouTube videos and such, like, I feel like everyone's really just praising this finale. And mm -hmm. I guess just for whatever reason, it just didn't work for me. I don't know. 
I there was stuff in the beginning of the finale I was really digging. Mm-hmm. Um and I was like, I I really am enjoying this. This is great. And then as it kind of ended, I was like, eh, I don't know. Didn't just didn't work for me. Which is a bummer because overall, I would say overall, both seasons included, Loki is probably my favorite show they've put out on Disney Plus. A favorite Marvel show. Uh, I love I I I know WandaVision seems to be the 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 big favorite among most people <laughs> and i like mm-hmm. wandavision but i think i enjoy loki overall a little more um but yeah i, I didn't care for the finale yeah <laughs> so i mean I, it's tough to kind of talk about without talking spoilers right but uh yeah yeah it was, it was okay yeah i think <clears throat> i think it's kind of like what i was saying you know sylvie was just angry the whole time like and it wasn't it wasn't enjoyable seeing her character kind of that way. I don't think it was really very building for her. Mm. <clears throat> and then yeah, it's the kangness of it all became the whole situation. And it's like it's frustrating because it's one of those things it's like I I want this to just be like I almost just want this to be like a show, like not just to help catalyst story along in the MCU, not just to, you know, continue the world building that's happening and the storylines that are happening with the other films. It's like, I just want this to be like a wonderful mesh of like quantum leap and sliders, but with Mm. Mobius and Loki and they're just going on these adventures and they're just doing their thing and being weird. And sometimes Sylvie has to come along because a strong, intelligent female needs to pull it all together and go, you two idiots, you could have just done this way. And you know, like that's, that's what I want. I just want like, 16 or 18 episodes of that happening. <laughs> I don't need it to be like this continuity story for the MCU. Right. And right. I don't, and if anything, again, and Dave and I have talked about this before, they met, they shove so much into such a short episodic mm. like thing. Like, why, I feel, I feel like it was six so, episodes? Yes, like <laughs> it's so rushed. Like, yeah. take your time with it. Give me two more episodes. Give me four more episodes. Screw it. Like, take your time and really build the story instead of shoving and compacting it so much that there's times I was like, there was, I think it was literally when the start of episode two started. I literally looked at David and went, Did we miss something? What just happened here? Like, yeah. it just jumped right in. The beginning of episode two felt <laughs> like I was like, we, I, was like, I literally was like, wait, did I miss an episode? Did two episodes drop and now we're watching the third one? <laughs> did we miss an episode? Like, did we did we miss an after credit from the first episode? I didn't think we did, but apparently we did. No, we didn't. No, we totally yes? didn't. No, 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 we didn't. And it was just, it was jarring. It was, and it was odd. Just, it's like, I would just like them to take their time to tell the story a little bit more. And, you know, because the world is done so well, you do just want to live within this world and it's so visually stunning and it's just so comfortable and the, just to watch the two of them banter back and forth and I, I mean it's enjoyable like it felt super rushed to the conclusion mm-hmm. and we feel like there's still questions that have no answers and I'm just never going to get those <laughs> at least the run times for the most part were better I like agree. than a lot of stuff I'm saying that we've gotten yeah, out of like sure. Marvel and Star Wars um but yeah, the episode count still is like six episodes, really. Like, give me ten ep- give me ten solid yeah. episodes. Take your time, really. Give me the story. Make it make it make sense. This reminds me, by the way. Now I'm going to completely jump back and take us off topic for just a split <clears throat> second. I meant to say when it came to the Marvels, I don't know how much it mattered that I never saw a uh, Secret Invasion going into that movie oh yeah i don't yeah, no, know I how much that show that. plays into that <laughs> movie at all like, secret invasion because we didn't like it <laughs> so this would actually the marvels takes place prior to the events of secret invasion so really was, yeah because uh, the in the release schedule marvels was supposed to come out before secret oh, invasion true. but things got pushed and they still had secret invasion slotted to come out when it did and so uh, that's that's dang, i didn't even know that yeah, learn something every day. All right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Now I can watch nope. Secret Invasion is what you're telling me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you good. Yeah. 
even though everyone tells me don't not bother. to. <laughs> I honestly <laughs> liked it, but I think the it fell off a little bit with the last episode, maybe the last two episodes. But up until then, I was enjoying it a decent amount. So, yeah, they didn't stick the landing, basically. Yeah. I mean, if anything, now I'm curious to watch that show just to see oh, like out of sheer curiosity. how bad it is. Like from, I mean, it sounds like you, for the most part, you know, you kind of enjoyed it to a point. It sounds like, right? But yeah, but well, I've but heard I think it's really major hate overall. Yeah, and I, I, like, I don't know that it's warranted. I, I think it suffers from the same thing that we, we literally were just talking about with Loki, and that it should be more episodes and longer episodes, and you can. You don't have to shortcut certain things that gotcha. get shortcutted, and so um, I think it suffers from some of that. But I do think that there's definitely some things within that that sh- a series that play a part into future storytelling for Marvel if they um, address them properly going forward. So there, there's aspects within it that are part of the larger MCU, but we just haven't gotten any additional stories obviously since that barely just came out this year to be able to see some of the ramifications of some of the stuff that happened in that series well <laughs> sorry our dog is again paying us a visit uh, she's, so <laughs> she's like right there she knows, her, like, she knows hey, her framing am i on camera <laughs> she's like hey what, what's going on yeah. um well we have like 10 minutes Mm. uh bobby i don't know is there any like uh, quick news items that you wanted to bring up i have before? one I or, have or one. michelle's got one no oh, go ahead the strike is over oh well yeah god that feels like it's been <laughs> <laughs> i know but we haven't done a show this is true the, the strike, strike is over, over. <laughs> well things to talk about yay technically it's over it's not well, it's not even True. technically over, actually. It's because they still have to <laughs> vote. Actually, techni- they still haven't signed bl- signed things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've just allowed everyone to go right. back to work. Go back to work. It is over. Here. Correct. Yeah, right. So yeah. it, it's what, over. Where do, where do you got, Bobby? Um. Yeah. So we within this today, we just got a decent amount of DC news. Oh which yeah. Kind of avalanche of it, really, and um, most of it is revolving around Superman legacy and, and some of the casting news. Mm-hmm. So I don't recall the name of uh, the, the actor um, Skyler, I think is his name it, who got cast as Jimmy oh. Olsen. Mm-hmm. And then so there was another the part. He does. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. Just he, look he, at his, his headshot. And you're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's yeah. Perfect. Awesome. It and I don't know if you've seen him in anything, but anything I've seen him in, I was like, it, when I think about how he was and the other stuff I've seen him in, so yeah, he'll make a good Jimmy Skyler, Olsen. Skylar Gizondo. Yes, yes, thank you. Gizon- Gizondo? Oh, <laughs> careful there. I know, sorry. <laughs> um, let's I mean, I assume it's Gizondo. Skylar, you know. <laughs> and, Pardon um, me. Miss Tessmacher, uh, if you've seen uh, the original... Christopher Reeves movie mm-hmm. will be a character in this Superman legacy as well. And it will be by actress Sarah Samp- Sampio. And I'm not familiar with her work. So um, I'm just kind of like, okay, well, we'll see how that goes. I, I don't really know much in terms of what she brings yeah. to the table. Like but... I'm, I'm looking at her, her filmography. I'm not, I'm just not familiar. Nope. Yeah. Not, so familiar it's her. like, okay, I could see it. She I mean, have, she's, she's a Victoria's very... secret angel. Oh, Okay. Oh, well, she's. Yeah. I was gonna say she looks woman. kind of familiar. Maybe that's she's, why. I don't... She's the Victoria's Secret Angel guy. Pull it together. <laughs> well, if oh, you've no. seen that original movie with uh, Christopher Reeves, and you see, um, uh, oh, his name just left my my mind. Um, the actor Gene Hackman, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't recall the actress that plays Miss Tessmunker, but Lex surrounded himself with a, a, a beautiful woman so nevertheless the other casting that we got was that nicholas holt will be our lex luther for this movie which i think it's really I, good I, I, i'm good with that because yeah. i remember when the rumors were like he was also trying out for superman and i was just right. like uh, uh, 
don't know, know about that one. Uh, but Lex. they were also mentioning it could have been Lex. And I was like, okay, yes, I can see Lex. Yeah. And then, you know, and I'm glad for him because he's been trying since the um, Robert Pattinson got the Batman. I was going to say, I thought he was also trying to be Batman as well. Yeah. Yeah. He's been trying to get into the DC universe. Yep. So now he's finally gotten one and he's got a good one. I think he'll eat that role up and and be really well, uh, really good as a a Lex Luthor, a foil to Superman. But Yeah. yeah. And we've known for a while, but Rachel uh, Brosnahan is uh, Lois Lane. Yeah, yeah, we've, yeah. But, but, been, yeah. but if anybody doesn't remember, and she's gonna be, oh, it's that's perfect Lois Lane casting. <laughs> Sorry, it just is it's spectacular. Yeah. So that's the um, DC of it all. Did you guys have any additional thoughts about those casting? Not really. Just. I'm excited. I'm excited that the strike is over and that this is actually going <laughs> to yeah. get made uh, because, yeah, we already had some of the casting and then like the strike was happening and it, it was just like, man, I just Aquaman is coming and I just really need good DC soon. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> and I was like, you know, for a while there, I was really feeling like, man, when is this? When is this going to end? When, when are they going to be able to shoot this? Mm-hmm. So it's it's nice to be back in this mode of like, OK. We're, things are happening we are now announcing the rest of the cast we're gonna we're gonna make this thing yeah make. there's there's so many i feel like there's so many shows that were like wow we only had like six more days of shooting to wrap the whole thing and we've had to wait this whole time just to finish up six like days of shooting and right. it's just nice to see things getting back to normal i have a quick question before we get out of here what did you guys think about the trailer from madam webb oh uh, bobby um, you know, I'll see anything, but I will, I'd be lying if I said that it made me <laughs> anxious to go see it. Like it didn't make me excited to go see it, uh, with the trailer. Uh, but like, like I said, I will see it because it's Spider-Man adjacent. And so I want to yeah. see what they're doing with it, what kind of story they're telling there. But this, the, the trailer itself did nothing to excite me in terms of wanting to go see it for sure. Uh, as someone who knows nothing about Madame <laughs> Web, about these characters that are in this movie, I nothing, nothing. Um, I watched it and it was like, um, I, yeah, okay. And then, you know, I saw some like TikToks and some Instagram mm-hmm. reels of like kind of quick explanations of like, okay, this is who this is and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, okay, at least that knowledge alone made me slightly more interested because I was like, as someone like me watching that trailer, I was just kind of confused, honestly, by it. <laughs> like, I didn't really even know, <laughs> like, what's happening. Here. Right. Like, so I think that trailer is just not made for someone like me who knows hmm. nothing about these these characters. So that, that was my reaction to the trailer. I, I think I don't know I don't know what it was maybe it was the strike maybe it was other things but I completely forgot about this film actually even being made <laughs> as, as a whole and so I I just didn't remember it but yeah like I don't know anything about Madam Web but I was watching this trailer and it just gave me the whole like Sony Spider Man like it's Marvel but it's not really Marvel but it's Marvel but it's not Marvel vibes mm. that was what I was saying the whole time I was like. This is giving me Morbius and Spawn kind of like, and eh, we're in that world, but we're not actually in that world. No, it is, just doesn't look like the quality. This is the Sony MCU. This is the Sony MCU. And I was just like, hmm. That, that was the I, vibe it gave me. I don't know. I was kind of like, okay, well, I guess we'll see that when that happens. I, I feel like they're That's at weird. a point where they need to start to tie these things in if that's their what they're going to do like you said they're they're part of the sony universe so start to connect it before you keep introducing too many more movies that just seem like separate things like why not bring in craven the hunter and also bringing in venom and all these other characters and make it make it something as opposed to just these singular silos that are around this sony universe and I know they sort of tried to do that a little bit with the the, the Morbius, but um, 
that didn't quite work just because a lot of people didn't like that movie. So I think mm-hmm. there's a stronger connection there when you have your marquee character for Sony, which is Venom, and go ahead and start bringing some of these other characters into that and, and making it sort of been a big event. And maybe that would really kind of get people more on board with what they're doing. Editor's note, I meant to say Venom, not Spawn. I don't know. No. Maybe I'm getting feverish because I feel I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> are watching me get a live fever. Well, I mean, we at least have to touch on the fact that now Lucasfilm has a, a chief creative officer. Oh, yeah. We we haven't talked about that. That got announced. What today? Was that today? Yeah, that was today. Hmm. That Dave Filoni has now been, I guess, officially a promotion. Yep. And is now uh head of Lucasfilm creatively. Or guess would be the way to put it um real quick bobby what are your thoughts on that are you happy to hear this news very very happy um because <clears throat> as he describes his role he will be integral to the development of a lot of stories with everything that's coming in because he said in the past he'd get introduced into certain stories that were going on well into the process so he could only do so much or say so much because they're already so far into it and now with his his new role he'll be right there from the inception of things to be able to help guide any kind of filmmaker into the story that they want to tell but just being able to be that star wars bible for them to be able to say "Mm, you can't quite do that that wouldn't work but maybe this would work and maybe these are some elements you could pull from and into your story and and that kind of thing and help guiding those stories and and making it a little bit more consistent and and intricate into the way that they fit together and aren't contradicting each other and all that stuff. So I think it's a good thing. Michelle, any thoughts with your half half voice? I don't want to push you to talk too much. It's even not really knowing the uh, hierarchy and intricacies that are happening at a uh, Disney Lucasfilm. I was kind of like, oh, he wasn't already in this role. No, oh, no, no. Okay, no, well, good for not. him. <laughs> um, Go Filoni. No, I, I mean, basically what you said, Bobby. I agree. We talked about this before. I mean, if there were an heir apparent to George Lucas, he, he seems yeah. to, to fit that uh, description. And um, even if when it comes to him directing, I'm I like Dave Filoni. I mean, I love everything he directs, right? But, uh, but I still love the idea of he him being in this role and his knowledge so, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited about it. It's good to hear, but it's one of those things where I still am like, I, I guess I hold back my excitement on just seeing the product of this and like hoping, which will take a while. It'll take a while, and I, but I really yeah. hope it does make a difference because yeah, Star Wars is very up and down right now, which is a bummer as a Star Wars fan. So, what did Disney do to all of our beloved like things? <laughs> I don't know. I to be fair, we show. had some good stuff too. They we just did had a good run. Good run for a while. Like I was telling Yasha, we actually talked about this, and I, I just was telling him that they're starting to make the changes, but it's like trying to turn a ship around. This already going in one direction it's going to take a while before we actually course correct and we've got some right. time in between that so it'll get there right they'll come for money it's all like, about the uh, money Kendrick baby says, yes it's all about yeah. the money that too um well shout out to yasha i'm sorry he had to yeah, miss the show tonight she, yasha has, was not able to join us tonight he was hoping to but wasn't able to make it but hopefully he'll be back on the show soon looking forward to it and yeah, I think with that, that basically wraps it up. Um, as for us, for those of you listening to the Flickr Effects podcast, uh, we are uh, streaming this live on Dragon Con digital media track. Um, and you can also go back and watch this on uh, the digital media uh, track uh, YouTube channel mm-hmm. and Facebook and Twitch. Mm-hmm. So go check that out. Um, but we as a podcast are available wherever you listen to podcasts, just search for flicker effect. That includes, uh, Apple podcasts, Spotify, um, all of those places. So please seek us out. We are also on the socials at flicker underscore effect, which includes Instagram threads, X slash Twitter, all those good places. And we really want to thank uh, DragonCon Digital Media for having us here yes. on Open Mic Night. I believe next week is a Behind the Track 
I don't have the details of that in front of me on who's going to be on behind the track, but that should be next week, followed by another open mic soon thereafter. But the open if mic you check our happening... chat, you might be able to oh, know. Who oh, there, oh, hey, there's hey, look, information right there. Information. <laughs> I had the comments up. I didn't have the private oh, chat up. Okay. So, sorry, Tyra. Please don't hate me. Sorry, Tyra. Um, so next up on open mic tonight on December 5th is Writers Going Digital. Tyra Burton will be back on the stream with Tales by Bobby and Clint Hall talking about how they use digital media to promote their work and connect with other with authors, other authors and readers. Uh, next Tuesday is Behind the Track with host and track director Charles McFall and guest Logan Jenkins. Clint Hall's that the book talk guy, right? Yes. I think so. Okay. Sorry. Random thoughts. Random thoughts. With that. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And yes, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Bobby. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. <laughs> <laughs> with that, I'm Dave Lott. I'm Bobby Jackson. And I'm Michelle Hillard. Thanks for listening and watching, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. See you guys.